Hey there guys and gals, welcome back to Back Pocket Game Reviews. Uh, just for the beginning of the video, if you guys enjoy the video, don't forget to drop a thumbs up. Also, if you're new here, you can click the subscribe button and press your girlfriend, because I hear girls really like manly men who can ding that BPGR bell. So go ahead and give a little flex on that. Now, now, we're talking about GameStop. GameStop has been giveth with the news recently, um, and actually this, this one's not their fault in any way. However, it is impacting them very negatively. So yesterday we talked about the Stadia release. Google Stadia is coming out, and for those of you who didn't catch that video, Google Stadia is essentially Google's game streaming service. It started off as Project Stream, which was essentially a giant demo for it, and if you talk to anyone who's been a part of Project Stream, pretty much all of them are going to tell you it worked wonderfully. And none of them have like some crazy intense internet. Almost everyone's got like mid-range internet. Um, and then people that have even higher range internet tell you it runs even better. Uh, but everyone says it runs pretty smoothly. And that's without some immense powerful internet package. And what streaming services are is essentially it's using Google's hardware out in the cloud to run and power the game. If you use their controller, that controller then syncs with what you're playing on and it communicates out to the cloud to reduce pretty much any latency. Yeah, their controller connects Wi-Fi to reduce any latency on input with the game you're playing. However, you still can play a game through a USB controller. A lot of people still say that works just fine. Um, or you can still even use, I guess, a mouse and a keyboard. Now, what that means is you don't have to buy any hardware. You don't have to buy hardware. There are no discs because there's no hardware to install those discs. So this is a fully digital ecosystem. So we can already see where that is a bit of bad news for GameStop. Well, this got announced yesterday, and since then, GameStop stocks have already dove about 30 cents a share. I'm not saying that that's the biggest drop I've seen out of GameStop, but that's a pretty big drop, seeing as that they already lost about $5 in one month per share back when they announced the buyout wasn't going to happen. So for it to now all of a sudden start to be a picture painted as and I, I get it, there are a lot of you out there that are like, oh, well, I don't want to do this Google stream, and that's fine. No one has to do this. If you prefer traditional gaming, you can, but if I had stock in GameStop and I were looking at it as one of the largest companies in technology, one of the largest technology companies is creating a gaming system. So I get it, it's not, it's not an established gaming company, but it is one of the largest gaming companies and one of the only companies who was able to come out with a smartphone that was able to compete with iPhone after iPhone was already on the market. Windows phone wasn't able to compete. Here comes Android. Android's now the number one selling mobile operating system. And I get it, there are a lot of different phones in that category, but Google doesn't really make much of the phones. Google is mostly just developing the OS. So if they're now all of a sudden entering the gaming space, if they're coming into it, and there's still a lot of details that are unknown, but that's not a good look if you're like, oh, we're gonna turn this company around. Oh, wonderful, this company now has a system where we're not gonna capture any sales. So if they even start to gain market share, any kind of market share, let's say they pull like one quarter of the gaming population over, that's now a quarter of the sales the GameStop just lost. And GameStop's already losing headway to digital games as a whole. I mean, you've got Xbox releasing a discless Xbox One, supposedly. Uh, as I stated to someone yesterday in the comments, I believe that's going to be a now available at E3 kind of thing. Um, but even that, if they're doing that just to reduce the price of the Xbox One, so let's say that knocks $50 off, there are people that are going to go out and buy it cheaper, buy Game Pass, and then just buy digital games when they're on sale, seeing as how steep those digital games go on sale, and now GameStop's now losing Xbox people as well. 
And there's a rumor going around that both consoles are going to have two SKUs. So both of the next-gen consoles, the PS5, is going to have two SKUs. A SKU is a unique identifier for each product within a retail store. So just as a heads up, that means it's two different devices, but the same device. Any slight variation can cause a SKU change. So if both of them do that next gen, where here's a cheaper offering where we can save you a little bit of money and just don't have a disk drive. Disk drive takes up probably a good chunk of the box as well. So could you imagine what they could do with like actual cooling and stuff after nixing it? And I, again, I know a lot of us are still very, we want our disk. I get it. That's why they're making two different SKUs, not just one. But to a lot of us, it would be very tempting to take the reduction, the price reduction, and buy digitally as opposed to keeping buying physically. But all of these are just very, very big nails in the coffin for GameStop. I mean, like this morning, so like yesterday at the stadium announcement, it went down like a little bit for GameStop on their stock ticker. And then this morning, it was just straight down. And I, I get it. It's not... Not a huge drop, but when you total in how many shares GameStop has and what that price devaluation does, actually turns out to be a relatively larger number, uh, which is kind of upsetting. However, supposedly GameStop will be announcing their fourth quarter sales numbers here very shortly, um, and they're supposed to be really good. So I, I don't know if now's the time to sell before the get while the getting's good or. Maybe you should at least hold off until they announce their fourth quarter sales for last year. But it's just really sad. It's really interesting to see how this is all kind of shaping up. Um, again, as I said, that digital future seems to be coming a lot quicker than what I even anticipated. You even have Microsoft working on their xCloud streaming platform right now. And so if Microsoft is doing this too, and Google's already doing it, and NVIDIA's got theirs being worked on. Not only is, well, my, you know, not only is GameStop getting cut out of the game sales, because obviously with the streaming service, there are no games to buy, and with the digital-only box, there are no games for GameStop to sell you. Then GameStop's just limited to selling you the hardware and the controllers. But with the streaming service, they, they really can't do much more than maybe sell you the Google controller, and that's assuming that they're willing to sell it. GameStop has before discussed, we won't carry this. They have blatantly said that before. We will not carry this because they thought it was going to be a problem for them. Um, there were even talks about it when the Xbox One originally got announced. Yeah, with the whole DRM stuff. Um, but there was going to be a way to trade in games. But originally, before GameStop knew anything about that, nope, we won't carry it. Which I guess that's the best way to handle it. Throw a temper tantrum like a child and limit what little sales you could get. I, I don't know. I, I guess that's kind of a hard way to look at it is, hey, it, it, is it biting the hand that feeds? Because these are the company we're making money off of selling their products, but now they're cutting us out of the selling portion. And that is kind of always the part that's at least kept them relevant to this day is, well, the selling of hardware. Um, I mean... There's not, every, you can't go everywhere. It's not like I can buy my hardware. Well, I guess I could buy my hardware digitally. You can actually buy, like I can go on my Xbox One downstairs and buy my games, like my system, directly off of my Xbox One. It's really weird. Like I, I just, I don't fully understand. And then it gets shipped to me. There's also a Microsoft store near me. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but even like if Sony is now thinking of going this way with making the two separate SKUs, because I really doubt at launch they're going to be like, here's a more powerful one and here's a less powerful one. No, usually you're going to save that more powerful one for a little bit down the line, which is also the other weird part with like a streaming service. Like with a streaming service, you always have the newest hardware. So in four years, if they make a Xbox 2X, you already have the most powerful hardware. You don't have to worry about updating and upgrading your hardware. That is kind of where streaming becomes a very interesting option. Again, it depends on price point and how they manage all that. Are you buying the games or are you just paying a subscription? Because if it's $20 a month and you have unlimited access to your games and don't have to buy the hardware, it's a pretty good deal. So, I don't know. 
we shall see how this all turns out. Obviously, it won't be till later this year that we really know all of the details for both. Supposedly, Xbox might prematurely blow their load on their consoles at E3, but we'll find out. I, I guess it, the E3 is really going to be mostly the Microsoft show this year, so... Guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Do you think this is bad news for GameStop? Again, I asked yesterday what you guys thought about streaming, and a lot of you guys feel like it isn't really where it should be yet. And I, I understand not everyone has the internet to run it, but as I'm saying, this is something that can run on okay internet. Like, we're talking like 20 megabits per second internet. Can probably run this just fine. Probably even lower than that. Um, and obviously, the higher the resolution you want to run it in, the higher the internet connection you'll need to actually run that. So like the 4K 60 FPS, you're probably going to need at least the 20 megs at that point. But I am curious to how you guys feel this is going to turn out for GameStop. I mean, we're, we're staring at the future of technology right now. These, these are some of the directions that the future is going to be looking at because, well, it, makes it so you don't have to keep buying pricey hardware and it also kind of makes it so the developers aren't really limited but there's just there's so many different things here so let me know what you guys think also if you want to follow me anywhere else links are as always in the description box down below and uh i'll have plenty more content coming for you so stick around